This guy can play. After a phenomenal 430 yard performance against Texas, Michael Penix Jr. is on his way to the national championship to play against the number one team in the country. With Washington making the playoffs for only the second time ever, Penix has absolutely cemented his legacy as one of the greatest Washington quarterbacks of all time. With one more game remaining at the college level, he would be trying to cement his legacy in the NFL. Can Penix do it? How good will he be? Find out in this video. I'm Chase Keller, and welcome to Michael Penix Jr., a detailed scouting report. Enjoy. Before we dive into Penix's positives and negatives, here's a quick overview of his collegiate career. A three-star pro-style quarterback recruit out of high school, he was originally committed to Tennessee before decommitting and flipping to Indiana. Penix spent four years at Indiana, racking up 342 completions for over 4,000 passing yards, 29 touchdowns alongside 15 picks. During his days at Indiana, he was hurt a lot, suffering a major injury every single year he was there. As a result, he transferred out of Indiana and went to Washington, where he has balled out the last two years. 698 completions on 1,058 pass attempts, which is a completion percentage of 66%, 9,289 passing yards, touchdowns and 17 picks this does not include his statistics in the national championship obviously this is being recorded and uploaded before so if you're watching this after my bad but he finished eighth in the heisman voting in 2022 and elevated himself to second in 2023 i watched these seven games that you see on your screen right now and determined how good Penix is as an nfl prospect with one game left yet over 40 starts on his belt it's time to see what he does well and what he can improve on. Let's go. It's not a Michael Penix Jr. scouting report if it doesn't start with his insane deep game. If the Texas semifinal playoff game was your first look at Penix Jr., you probably noticed how great he is at not only delivering the ball 50 yards downfield, but also doing it accurately and smartly. I promise you that the semifinal game is not the only occurrence of Penix's elite deep ball. It comes from several different ideas and positives in his play style, beginning with the strength portion. Some scouts may believe it's nothing fantastic, and I can't say I disagree. It's nothing elite, but it's not just viable. He's able to rocket the ball 50 plus yards downfield on some plays, and on this one against Oregon in 2022, he throws this rocket 48 yards downfield to fellow 2024 draft prospect Jalen Polk for an eventual 76 yard touchdown. He is able to get velocity from many different passing angles, whether it be a sidearm pass or a line drive or your normal high arc deep ball. When a QB is able to reach 50 yards in the air, his arm strength is not just viable. Don't let any scout convince you of that. Now, the most appealing and satisfying portion of this deep ball is his phenomenal accuracy and ball placement, consistently delivering these 20 plus yard balls right into the cookie jar. In 2023, he had 16 deep touchdowns, which was the third most in all of FBS. Likewise, he had 14 in 2022, which was the fifth most. Returning to Oregon, this time for the 2023 regular season game, he delivers this 43 air yard sideline ball to Romo Odunze perfectly into the jar, and Odunze even got some yak on top of it. Odunze isn't smothered, but with how tight this coverage is, you don't see many quarterbacks placing a ball like this. Here's another ball, where he finds Polk down the sideline for another fantastic deep ball, which could have been a touchdown if it was a touch further, but still, how many college quarterbacks are making these throws as consistently as Penix is? And finally, he also reads well going deep. He's got that first read mentality going deep where he can anticipate the coverage and chuck a ball downfield efficiently and quickly, able to make this read at fast rates. In this play against Cal, it's a designed deep ball, but he finds the barely open man in, guess who, Jalen Polk, and delivers it with crisp ball placement down the sideline. Beauty. I can't get over how insanely good Penix is at throwing the ball deep, and I know NFL teams are going to love it just as much as I do. And speaking of his reads, his pre-snap reads are among some of the best in this class. These reads include identifying blitzes, figuring out where he will have to 
figuring out where he will have to escape early if needed, processing coverages and coverage tendencies, and overall just efficiently finding which man should be open before the ball is even snapped. For example, he reads this man coverage on the left side of the field, and his read was based on what DB number 7 does here. If he stays in zone, Odunze is open down the middle of the field. Instead, 7 follows Odunze in man, and tight end Josh Cuevas slips to the left side to go deep. Noticing that the linebacker playing in man can't keep up with him, he delivers this deep dart and allows for him to nearly take it all the way. Another one comes here, where he is able to deliver this pass to his tight end Devin Culp when he noticed the man coverage left a hole on the right sideline. This seems like a pretty easy pass to make, but when you look at Penix's eyes, he knew this would be open the entire time. These are the kinds of reads I'm talking about. He is able to perfectly read a defense and identify not only its holes in coverage, but also the pressure coming at him. This can give off several notes about Penix Jr. He's great pre-snap as already said, he heavily watches film, and can identify all types of defense coming his way. But most importantly, you can identify that he is a smart leader. His pre-snap reads allow for some fantastic anticipation as well. When I watched Penix, I went from his first game that I watched to the last game, beginning with 2020 against Michigan and ending with obviously this last game against Texas. And I'll admit, anticipation was a neutral point for me for the most part. I had it noted, but it wasn't until I watched the Arizona game that I realized it's actually great. Here's one example. He finds Polk on this comeback route, and despite the off-man coverage not being too far off, he delivers this pass and places it high for Polk to go up and get it. Harder for the DB to make the play, and the greatly timed throw doesn't give the DB enough time to jump and make the play. Another example from the same game. In this game against Arizona, he's able to identify the continuous soft coverage and hold off on a pass until 25 yards deep. He delivers this ball short arm to Alexander Jr. to ensure that the DB can't get at it, and eventually he makes the grab. Phenomenal read here by Penix. And it's not just in the Arizona game. In a situation where Washington is looking to put the first points on the board, he reads the off-man coverage and pushes it directly to his receiver on the out route to get the first down. He throws it quick enough to the point where the DB can't squeeze the route, but doesn't throw it too early to the point where the receiver isn't ready for it. Fantastic timing. Anticipating routes and coverage is one thing. Being able to deliver the ball at all three levels, covered or not, is another thing. And along with the deep accuracy previously mentioned, Penix has that ability. He can deliver tight passes everywhere, he can adjust to different angles and motions, whatever he needs in order to deliver a pass as accurately as possible. I would have liked to see more throws of him throwing into tight coverage, but he's kind of safe and cautious in that aspect. In this example against Cal, we see Polk get the ball yet again, this time on a fade in the end zone. He makes a pretty great grab, but it would not be possible if not for Penix perfectly high topping the DB, making it difficult to deflect this ball. I don't want to not give Polk credit for this grab, but this ball couldn't have been more perfectly placed given the circumstances. Along with his pretty great ball placement, he is also able to deliver on the run. On this play, he fakes out and makes a second effort to play make a receiver. Oh my goodness, it's Polk again, who Penix finds running in stride with him. He delivers for the touchdown, one of three that Polk scored in this game. Being able to deliver effectively at all three levels of the field is huge, and I think Penix does that so well. Moving on to the final trait I want to discuss, it is in my opinion the most important trait in the books, poise and pocket presence. I didn't save these for last because they are the best, or most important, because they are not anything special. Despite that, they are still viable enough to be counted as a positive in this report. Let's begin with poise. On this play, Penix stays poised and patient in the pocket in order to dump off this pass after nobody came open. I like this play for several reasons, but most importantly, he is able to adjust his positioning in the pocket because of the pressure and stay upright, delivering the pass unfazed. I may be one of the only guys to put this in the positive section, as many scouts think the poise might actually be a negative in his game. I still do think that his patience and his ability to move around in the pocket is viable enough to work in the NFL. I do understand it being a neutral point, but not a negative. How he responds to pressure is also a huge positive. 
I noticed his pocket presence before his poise, and I think it's more of his decisions after escaping than his ability to escape in itself. For example, Penix stays up in the pocket until he's forced to escape, and instead of going straight to scramble like most of these quarterback prospects would, he keeps his eyes downfield looking for a pass, none available, so he fakes and gets a few yards on the ground. The escape was good, but the decision was better. Having both poise and pocket presence is huge, and while neither of them are fantastic, both of them being viable is enough for the league. So, there were the strengths in Penix's game. Now, let's get to the negatives. Let's begin with this unrelated to film section. There are plenty of vitals that go against Penix Jr., and it starts with the common factor in most of these quarterback prospects in this class, age. In an age where so many young quarterbacks are entering the league, some of the best prospects are coming in at 24 and 25 years old this year. Penix will be one of those 24-year-old rookies turning 24 in May. He also has a huge injury history as previously mentioned, two torn ACLs, an SC joint injury that required surgery, and a separated shoulder that ended a full year, all while at Indiana. Along with that, the defenses he faced in the Pac-12 are not good in the grand scheme, and in my opinion, he played with the best surroundings in college football, having an elite offensive line and three great wide receivers. Another issue I have with Penix is his processing during the play. He's fantastic at identifying defenses pre-snap, but if his original read does not work out, I have issues, primarily in his progressions in these situations. First read is whoever the first read is, then the second and final read is the check down. Watch this play for example. He wants to take an end zone shot, so he tracks this top receiver in Polk as he's just running a go route to the end zone. As this play progresses, he only looks at him and then forces a ball out of bounds because he was smothered. Cuevas is open, Dylan Johnson is open, but he forces it to Polk. This one is more serious as he reads one read this entire time despite him having light ears behind the line. Sure, nothing was open, but more improvising and, you know, not chucking it out of bounds could have maybe helped. I'm just not a fan of his processing if his read isn't open, and being a one-read quarterback is extremely concerning in my eyes. The final point I want to discuss is his athleticism. He's honestly fine athletically, and while it might not be up to NFL standards, it should be okay. The issue that I have is that he does not incorporate athleticism into his skill set. We rarely see him taking off on runs, and when he gets opportunities outside of the pocket, he wants to extend the play through the air and not with his legs. I mean, it's probably smart given his injury history, but again, his athleticism already doesn't stack up with NFL standards, and with his playstyle reflecting that of a pocket passer, not having that extra step will limit the flexibility that teams have with him as a signal caller. Well, that wraps up the positives and negatives of Michael Penix Jr. Before I send you all off, here's my final grade and scouting report on Penix. Beginning with his positives, lots of starts under his belt. Deep ball accuracy is unreal, best in this class. A lead at diagnosing coverages and coverage tendencies pre-snap. All around accuracy is phenomenal. Arm strength is fantastic. Love his anticipation at all three levels. Can efficiently throw on the run, and both poise and pocket presence are viable. And his negatives consist of, will be a 24 year old rookie, extremely concerning injury history, Processing consists of one read and then check down if not open. Nothing to adore athletically. Most 2023 interceptions were forcing passes. Played against some bad defenses in 2022 and 2023. And finally, in my opinion, he played with the best surroundings in college football in 2023. When it comes to his grade, his play just reminds me that we are seeing an insanely good quarterback class, and while most of them may be old for the average NFL prospect, they are still crazy good. Penix is no different. He gets a first round grade, which is the fifth one that I have given to a quarterback. Is Michael Penix Jr. a first round pick? Let me know in the comments section below. Wait, are you not subscribed yet? Well, do it now. I release content like this all the time and would really appreciate your support. I'm Chase Keller from Chase Keller Journalism, and I will see you all next time.